Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to do an unboxing for the Devil's Beach, the Omaha Landings. This is a print on demand from the Battles on Demand line of uh, lock and load publishing using those really slick laser cut counters like we've seen in other games that I've uh, shown on here before. And we've got a bunch more to look at, but let's take a look at this one right now. Back of the box. It is uh, solitaire playability of 10, complexity level 5, uh, ages 10 and up, 1 to 2 players, 1 to 2 hour playing time. And the reason why it does have solitaire rating of 10 is it does have specific solitaire rules to this uh, game. Back of the box says the Devil's Beach, the Omaha Landings, formerly known as Omaha the Battle for the Beach, is a platoon level simulation depicting the invasion of Omaha Beach and fighting across the Normandy countryside during the D-Day invasion on June 6th, 1944. Using infantry platoons, machine gun sections, artillery batteries, and tank platoons, players control the American and German forces that took part in these historic battles in a bid to uphold history or to change it. The second edition comes with new counters, map, updated scenarios, and solitaire rules. That is a look at the map, and these are the counters that we're going to take a look at inside, but that's the back of the box. I know a lot of people like to see what is on the back of the box. There's a front cover, pretty uh, cool front cover as the boys are getting ready to storm Normandy. Let's take a look inside the box and <clears throat> see what we get. Pardon my, uh, <clears throat> clearing my throat here, guys. Sorry, but uh, ragweed's been killing me here in Texas. Uh, Devil's Beach uh, manual, version 3.0. You've got your laser cut counters. We'll come back to those. We've got our player aid cards, which we'll come back to as well, and the map. And the box and the lid that Dan always talks about on his show, No Enemies Here. If you're not watching No Enemies Here, you need to be. Great, great show to be watching from Dan Pancaldi. He does a great job at uh, giving us all of the wargaming news that we could ever want in one place. As you can see, the, this map is going to have to be overlaid on top of itself to... Uh, create your full map. This uh, this map was too big to do on one sheet, so it was done on two, and that's how this is going to work. You just place it over on top like that, put a piece of plexi on top, and you're good to go, uh, and that's how that map is going to work. It's a good size map. It's not, you know, tiny, but it's not gigantic either. Uh, very easily uh, manageable piece of plexi, and uh, low counter density game this is, So, uh, but there's plenty of room to maneuver here as you'll see when we take a look at the counters. You'll see what I'm talking about with low counter density. Uh, here's your uh, fire results, close assault. This is your CRTs for the game. And then on the back has your terrain effects chart. Tells you all of the different types of terrain and their effects on movement and combat, as well as blocking for line of sight, things like that. Then you have your random events table and your turn track. There are random events in the game. These are handled by uh, die roll. Uh, and it, adds a little bit of chaos into the game, keeps things a little different each time instead of always being static and being the same thing each and every time. So this adds a little bit of randomness and a little bit of chaos, which is a lot of fun. Now I'll take a look at our counter sheet here. This is uh, what I was talking about before, about low counter density, not a tremendous amount of uh, counters for both sides. I mean, it's a good amount, but not uh, a tremendous amount of counters. You got like almost, you got 29 for the Americans and you've got uh, 23 for the Germans. So it's uh, a decent amount, but not gigantic. The rest of these are for fired and for bunker markers. Uh, this is uh, what I was talking about. Low counter density makes it real easy to control on a map like this. Then you have your manual. All right, we'll take a look inside and see what's in there. This is a pretty, pretty quick you know, rule book. It's what you expect from the battles on the man line. Pretty short, sweet, gets you right into the action. Uh, scenarios start on page 10, the rules start on page 3. Uh, so you've got only about seven pages of rules, and then the scenarios, uh, like I said, start on page 10. You have two The Devil's Beach and Counterattack at Veerville. And the first page of rules here it has your breakdown. Let me see if I can zoom in on this for you guys, give you a little bit of a better look at this. There we go. So we've got our counter legend that explains all of the different parts of the counter and what each thing means here. Close assault, AP firepower, AP range, HE firepower, HE range, and here's your different uh, types of counters in the game. You've got armor, infantry, heavy machine gun, any aircraft, mortars, any tank gun batteries, and any tank gun battery over here. You've got your 88s over there and your packs for the Germans. 
Uh, then we have your breakdown of the stacking, your event table, how that works, unit color, sequence of play, uh, what happens in the American player's turn, like I said, a role for event. You may have uh, different events that happen at different times or to change things up. And then you have movement, fire combat, uh, your whole fire combat procedure, your results, line of sight, uh, opportunity fire explanation, close assault, uh, and then you have special unit capabilities, engineers, rangers, uh, Sherman DD tanks, and mortars. Then you also have naval gunfire support, and then you have the scenarios which start on the next page. Here is the Devil's Beach, the main scenario. This is uh, the assault on the beach itself, and it's pretty fun, pretty fast moving game. You can get it done in probably about an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, there's your solitaire rules that I was talking about before. This is how you're going to uh, run uh, the solitaire game if you want to just play, if you don't want to play both sides, you can actually play the solitaire uh, Devil's Beach scenario. Then you have the second scenario, which is counterattack on Beerville, and this gives you the setup uh, here as well, and then the special scenario rules. So that gives you a quick look at the two scenarios that come with this game, and that is the end of the rule book there. But like I said, only seven pages, pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, I really dig these uh, these laser cut counters. Now let's take a look. Let's pop one of these out so you can get a, a bit of a closer look. On uh, this is an American infantry unit here. Let's see if I can get this in here with the, with the lighting just right but nice thick laser cut counters and that is a better look at what the counter looks like for the infantry and you got about 80 of these I believe 80 or 88 on this uh, uh, sheet but like I said you've only got uh, less than half of that is actual combat units. 29 for the Americans and 23 for the Germans. The rest of these are all admin counters, but this gives you a good example of uh, what you're going to use in the, or not a good example, it gives you uh, an idea of what you're going to see in the game. But that is the Devil's Beach from Lock and Load Publishing, Battles on Demand line. Now, like I said, it is a print on demand, so when you uh, go ahead and order it. They will print it up for you and send it out. Or you can also, if you want to save a few bucks, you can get the print and play. And if you're uh, artsy, craftsy type, you can do it yourself. But that is the Devil's Beach. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.